Maximize your yields while spreading out your workload with the earliest maturing winter cereal. Visit kws.com slash CA to see how our hybrid rye varieties can work for you. High yields, high quality, high value for your farm. KWS, seeding the future since 1856. It's now time here on Real Agriculture for another edition of the Beef Market Update. And we're talking to Ann Wasco, the Gateway Livestock Exchange. Ann, how are we doing? Good. Good morning to you, Sean. Yeah. But hey, how are the pasture conditions out there in Saskatchewan? Oh, I don't even want to talk about it. It's so good. Yeah. That's, uh, cool. well, that's good. Yeah. Some good rains again, even the uh, night before last, uh, moved through parts right around where we're at. Uh, so just to be able to talk about rain in July, holy smokes. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Love to see it. Okay. Uh, kind of a weird week. We had Canada Day on Monday. And of course, Independence Day, July 4th was on Thursday. So it's like one of those weeks where there's, you know, we're going to talk about light trade, I, I'm sure. Uh, how does that have an impact on where prices are here at the end of the week? Well, everything in terms of, uh, you know, the, like you say, the two holidays, first of all, from a trade perspective, um, the U.S. is still, I think, trying to get some some business established. I think we'll see that later today as we're talking Friday morning. Um, but we did get some U.S. business done in the north, steady money with last week. So Nebraska at 198. Um, I think the south is going to be holding out for 191, 192 today. And that's where that would be a, a little bit better than 190 last week. So again, we'll wait and see what happens. Um, but again, when you've got these uh, holiday kills, um, and of course, we've had a plant disruption because we had a, a plant in Kansas uh, closure because of a roof collapse with rain. Um, so all of those things mean less beef gets processed, and that supports this cutout, that wholesale price that we're always talking about every week. So, for example, so there was no report from USDA yesterday because of the holiday, but on Wednesday night, um, it closed six and a half bucks higher than last week's close. So now we're sitting just shy of 330 on the choice cutout. Um, so that's the highest it's been this year, just to you know paint a picture on, on where it's been. And the, for the cutout to make a high in July is pretty unusual. It usually would have been already in June. So again, there's one of the impacts of these smaller kills that we've been seeing um, and keeping that wholesale price pretty elevated. The other thing that's happened is the select choice spread has widened out to 25 bucks now. Mm -hmm. um, that's a whole bunch closer than where it was. We talked about that really narrow spread earlier this year. So again, that's that's probably the biggest impact is keeping that choice or that whole cutout, that wholesale market, very elevated. Well, it's definitely getting the attention of some politicians in the U.S. I heard uh, that uh, this week, President Biden reached out to USDA Secretary Tom Vilsack and said, you know, what's going on? Why are beef prices so high? So uh, always interesting to see, kind of late to the party there a little bit. They've been high for a while. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, live export data. I, uh, we have uh, new numbers. What's the update? Yeah, May, May data came out from StatsCan, so this would be our live trade uh, to the U.S., obviously. And if you recall back in Feb, March, April, we were running at really big export, well, big year-over-year -year numbers in terms of fat, fat cattle moving south. And that was largely due to that wide basis we talked about earlier this year. When our, when our market is so much under the U.S., it tends to drag more cattle to the U.S., well, of course, basis is right reverted back to, or in May especially, right back to par or even premium. And so that trade slows down. So and it showed up in the data. Um, again, this is after the fact. This is May. But we saw exports right in line with a year ago, so 100% of a year ago. Um, I think when June's data will come out, though, again, just looking forward, um, we'll see the impact of this Cargill, Ontario um, strike and more of those Ontario fed cattle were moving south, but that will be in next month's data, not, not last month's. Yep. Some of those cattle are moving south and of course also moving west to what extent hard to, to know, but yeah. uh, that's the advantage. If, you, of getting if you've been traveling highway one lately, you've seen lots of Ontario liners, uh, coming this direction, uh, with, with fed cattle. So, I mean, that's, that's obvious. They have to go yeah. somewhere. And so they're moving south and they're moving west. Not only people moving from Ontario to Alberta, also cattle, except yeah. cattle have a bit of a termination date. Sorry. Yeah. So whole, yeah, exactly. So hopefully we get some good news this weekend on the outcome of the 
of the of the strike vote on this yeah. uh, new contract so we can get back to normal and cattle can stay where they're supposed to be processed. Yeah. yeah, make sure everybody check out realagriculture.com over the weekend. That strike vote uh, for that Guelph facility for Cargill, that vote is happening with the union on Saturday. So we'll uh, we'll keep up to date and we'll have something in the cattle email that goes out on Monday. Um, oh, hey, one thing that's kind of a little bit back to normal, and this is very weather related, mm-hmm. is auction mart volume. Now, when we were under severe drought, we cattle were being pulled forward, right? We were because no grass, get out of here. Yep. That's a different situation this year. So auction mart's a little quiet. Yeah, it's pretty quiet. And it's funny to say this is normal because it doesn't feel like we've had normal for three, some areas, yeah. even four years. But the data really shows in the last three years, we pulled cattle early. There was a lot more activity on the internet sales here in Western Canada. That's been quiet. Um, just everything very, very quiet. So for example, just running some numbers, and this would be Alberta auction market uh, volumes in June alone were 35% smaller than last year. And even following up going back as far as May was 21% smaller. So that whole second quarter saw volumes through the markets in Alberta down 15%. So now we're starting July and, and the same story will be will hold true now. The question will be, usually we get that yearling run starting in August. But even that with the conditions we're seeing could get pushed back a little bit because grass conditions are just so, so substantial. So we'll see the heavier weight yearlings coming off in August, but uh, anything that's got some time, I think will will take its time because on the market side, Sean, I just wanted to go through some of the prices compared to last year, yeah. just in terms of the dollars over last year. Alberta fed cattle market today, just taking today's price with running 13 bucks a hundred over last year. Feeder cattle are anywhere from 40 to 50 bucks a hundred over last year, same week. Calves, like, you know, five to six weight light cattle, a hundred bucks over last year. And even the cow market, 30, cow cow market, $30 over last year. So these are um, just amazing price levels that uh, that we're starting the, 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 the summer with. So if, if we're, because of the, the moisture, less cattle going to auction mart, less cattle getting placed in feed yards at this time of the year. How, how does that impact what happens with the fall run and what happens when cattle, finished cattle are coming to market? It just there has, there's an adjustment there compared yeah. to what we've been dealing with the last three years. For sure. And that's why these cattle on feed reports are so important every month, whether we're talking about the one in Western Canada or the U.S. report. Um, that we get to see where the placements are in terms of uh, versus a year ago. We get to see the weights of those placements. And then the market, talking futures market, can determine, you know, where we want to be in terms of those deferred live cattle contracts based on placement. So, again, just simply put, when we, we're in these drought markets and we pull cattle earlier, it tends to bunch things up and it makes that fall calf run a little flatter in volume instead of the big peak. So I think this year, if we're getting back to normal, it's going to be quiet. And then the fall run hits and we're going to have a big peak. Got a question here before we wrap up. That's a little bit more retail related. And it, and I think it talks about how pro, you know product flow <laughs> is sort of an answer here. But uh, the question is, why are we seeing double A beef in stores and no triple A? So I don't know sure what grocery chain this is or where they shop, but they are from British Columbia the Cow- in Cowichan Valley. Um, talk about that in terms of how, how grocers make the decision on what gets placed when and where. Well, you know, every um, retail outlet is going to have a, you know, a specific uh, clientele or customer that they're dealing with, um, different outfits, maybe different price points. But let, let's put it this way. We talked earlier about that choice cutout value. It's at a it's at a new all time high for for 2024. That means that choice, or in our country, AAA product is trading extremely high, and uh, the AA product or select in the U.S. is going to be at a at a you know a price point back of that. You know, so different retailers could be looking at this is a price point I need to move product, so I'm going to have to move AAA. Or double A. If I'm if I want to bring in some higher value um, product, it's going to be you know at a much higher price point. And and so I'm suspecting. I don't know in this case this question that's been asked, but I'm I'm suspecting it's a price point. Retailers decided I'm going to sell a lower price point to move beef, um, and that means they're not buying the triple A. 
Yeah, or or there's another market outside the country that's paying a lot more for AAA than maybe some of the domestic buyers are. Right. Remember, we talked last, uh, I think it was two weeks ago, about bigger exports to Japan. You know, uh, more product moving there, for example, at the higher end. So the, yeah. the product's still being produced, you know, in terms of the Canadian beef production. But where it all goes to, it, it obviously flows to the highest price market. It might not be the local retailer. Maximizing the value of the carcass in totality. So if you do that, and when you do that, that works its way back to the producer. The producer is getting more money. Because we, a lot of times we think about it as like, the, you know, what a steak, we think about a steak and ground beef. Much bigger than that. And if it was only about steak and ground beef, producers would be getting a lot less money. So oh, exactly. it's interesting exactly. on the trade flows. Hey, and have yourself a great weekend. I'm sure you'll be taking in some uh, stampede time. So uh, Yahoo and uh, have at her. Yes, sir. Have a great one. should maybe say. That is, that is Ann Wasco at the Gateway Livestock Exchange for this week's episode of the Beef Market Update.